It's been four months since my heart attack. Called it. That whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Ha! Get wrecked. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia? I think I got that. A strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. Ah, but you've been in the same room with it for four months, haven't you, Isau? A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better. More appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages of peace. The fuck was Dean's idea with this? This is sad. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our home in order to pay for a cure. My god. Of course there isn't a cure. No. Damn it, Hissau. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But then, the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get well gifts began to trickle down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. My goodness. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Oh, come on, Hisao. Don't be like that. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanwan was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. Well, that's not right. If you're gonna confine someone into a room, at least get to know them. I guess it's because they're in a hurry and have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point I stopped watching TV. The fuck is TV? Torture violence? Torture video? Torture Volumes Torture Ventriloquist Torture... Venison? Tubular... Vehicle Tyrannosaurus Vex I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library 
at the hospital, although it was made more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started to feel naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stories. God damn it, this man's charming. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside, instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Yeah, I know that feeling. You try living for ten millennia. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't even know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I were going to cry. Oh my god. This is the worst. But that happened only rarely, oh thank goodness. And I couldn't even cry. Why not? Today the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are sort of even dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not even a party. This is... there is this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time sorting his papers and then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Ha! I use that sometimes with my torture tools to build tension in my victims. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Isal. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look at myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together into a sea of letters. Ah, I see what you're doing visually then. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, contradictions, and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of the... Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All of this for the rest of my life. Every day. I'm afraid this is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications or is being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years. What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents and would believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. Oh, come on! You're gonna get the kid away from his friends? Although, I guess they haven't really been much friends if they haven't visited, like he said. What? Please calm down, Hisao. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it... It tells me... The way he says it tells me that he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever of my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Is it in Nippon? Judging by that name, it's a Nippon. 
disabled. What am I? It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence, while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try and disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a couple of and a look a couple of weeks back. I think you'll like it. Looks like I don't really have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll only need a a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue our education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamn opportunity. Oh, come on, so Cheer up. Well, you should be excited at the ch chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school, and while it's not the same one, a special school, that's an insult. That is what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All of the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital was a graduate. I don't care person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. That's what a disability is. I mean, he's not wrong, but that is kind of harsh. I really hate that something so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I had always thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame this like a reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now, something about how I can go back to s how I can go back to school anyway. But no, I don't say anything. The fact is, I know it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all of this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I notice, but the thought of going to a disabled school... What are those even like? As much as I try and put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. There you go, Sal. That's a, that's a good start. Yeah, good start, good start. It's like when I died and came back. That wasn't a bad thing. In the long run. That is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something. Even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start, and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. Yeah, there you go, Hassal. Come on, pull it through. Yeah. At the very least, I'll try and see what my new life will look like. Yay. Thank goodness. Act 1. Life Expectancy. Ugh. I do not like that title.